Jesus plus nothing, 100% natural, no additives. Andrew Farley's celebrating your freedom in Christ. Call in and ask your questions at 877-956-9566. That's toll free at 877-956-9566. Via satellite from Texas, it's Andrew Farley Live. And we're glad you're here today to join us. Andrew Farley is here, and we are going to have a wonderful time together. We hope you will join us and ask a question or two. Uh, My name is Chip Polk. I'm here every week at this time with uh, Dr. Andrew Farley. Our number is 877-956-9566. That's 877-956-9566. It's toll-free across America and across Canada. Well, have you had a good Thanksgiving weekend and all that? Oh, my goodness. I need like uh, 10, 12 hours of exercise to work it all off. Me too, brother. I hear that. <laughs> yeah. So we're uh, we're celebrating Thanksgiving weekend with you, though, and we're thankful. In fact, uh, part of the program, we're going to be talking about why Christians can be thankful. Uh, you know, we can be thankful because Jesus Christ lives in us. We can be thankful because we are forgiven people. We uh, can be thankful because... We're totally accepted and free from religion, none of that dead religion for us. And, of course, uh, we can be thankful because we're children of God. We've got this new heart, new identity. Wonderful. You know, I, I, I can't imagine. I, just when you said uh, we, we're free from religion, I can imagine somebody that just tuned in for the very first time going, what? does that mean <laughs> would you mind just explaining just for a minute while we uh, uh for no, somebody who maybe no, no I, I don't want to not I, gonna i'm explain. just gonna leave it out there you know it's time that people uh just <laughs> this this word religion that we've been worshiping uh you know it's okay if all we have is jesus we you know religion all right i'll do it I'll do okay it. go ahead religion a return to bondage that's what it is the word ligare means to bind and ray uh, which starts off the word religion. Re means a return. So it's it's essentially a return to bondage. Uh, one looking at analyzing that word in one way, you just come up with this, whoa, what are we doing returning to bondage when we're married to Jesus? And so, you know, Romans 7 says we die to the law um, and we live for Christ. How do we live for Christ? By dying to the law. So what in the world are Christians doing saying that they're uh, needing the law? It's, uh, it's cheating on Jesus. And it's spiritual adultery, and um, he's enough. And so I'm thankful, Chip. I mean, this this Thanksgiving season, I'm really thankful that uh, the Jesus Christ who died on the cross and rose again and lives in me is enough for daily living, and that I can trust the Lord, I can trust him, um, and I don't need a bunch of of rules to keep me moral and keep me ethical. And that is good news. 877-956-9566 is our number. You can speak with Dr. Andrew Farley live if there was some question about that as you were hearing that explanation, uh, that description and definition of religion. You're going, oh, wait a minute. Uh, well, then give us a call. We'd be happy to discuss that with you or any question you might have. If you were, you know, this time of the year with Thanksgiving, the holidays and so forth, uh, a lot of times you're thrust back with family that then thrust may be the wrong word, but sometimes it feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thrust back with family for a while. And, uh, and, and it's not always just, uh, you know, all smiles and flowers and, and sometimes it's yeah, really uncomfortable. You, you know, I think people, we, we need our identity in Christ more than ever uh, this time of year. I mean, we always need our identity in Christ, but let me tell you, if, if you don't know your identity in Christ, then your relatives have an identity for you. <laughs> <laughs> True. And they are, they are happy to pin you with an identity. And, uh, you know, they, they don't necessarily think much of you being in Christ, and they don't, they're not ready to hear from you. You're not, a, you're not someone that's going to uh, change their lives because, hey, they grew up with you. What does the Bible say? You know, a prophet is never welcome in his own hometown. That holds true for every Christian. I mean, uh, the reality is is that we've got this new spiritual identity, and then we've got all these other lesser, sometimes fake identities, fake IDs that uh, come hurling at us. And so, hey, you're you're who you've always been, or I knew you growing up, or um, you know, you call yourself a Christian, but, and uh, we we hear these sorts of things uh, around this time of year as people gather together, and uh, it's just human versus human, and humans clash, and we don't always get along. Well, you know, it's funny because <clears throat> you um, 
you, you grow and and you learn things. And for example, in this particular message, when you when you uh, when you hear about your freedom and the that this wonderful acceptance that you have in Christ, yeah, you just want to share it with the people you love, and so you end up trying to do that. And and often, like you say, it's just. Um, uh, all, they look at you like, well, who, who made you suddenly the big authority in this deal? Well, it's not that you're trying to change them. It's just, it's a, you just discure, discovered the cure to cancer, and you want to tell them about it. You know, it's the greatest thing in the world. Eight seven seven nine five six nine five six six is our number. We have a, a special gift we're going to give all of our participating callers today. It's a copy of Andrew Farley's book, Operation Screw Tape. Uh, the Art of Spiritual Warfare, and it's a really great book. That you, it's sort of the sequel to the C.S. Lewis classic, uh, a modern version of that, and and also uh, um, a clear message of this uh, grace uh, is is completely woven through it. You'll love the book. It's Operation Screw Tape, and it's absolutely free to every participating caller today. Eight seven seven nine five six. Nine five six six. Yeah, we've got open lines. If you want to jump in right now, uh, you're welcome to. Yeah, we're talking about thankfulness. It's that time of year. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about giving thanks. The Bible talks about thanksgiving. And um, it's it's God's will that we give thanks in everything, the Bible says. And that sounds great, sounds rosy, sounds churchy. Uh, and then we go home and try to have our plastic smile and grit our teeth and, and, and be thankful to God. And what we did today in our church service was something a little bit different. We... We, instead of telling people they need to be thankful or they should be thankful or they better be thankful, uh, we gave them, you know, our top 10 reasons for uh, why they can be thankful. Yeah. And what happens, Chip, is that uh, the gospel uh, takes hold in our hearts. Uh, the gospel uh, captivates us. Uh, God g- captures our attention through the gospel. Mm-hmm. And we discover reasons why we can say, wow, and thank you. And uh, so, you know, it's like uh, giving thanks is a setting of the mind. It is a setting of the mind, or in many cases for me, it's like a a resetting of the mind. There you are with loads of confusion, and uh, you're like, what should I do? What should I think? What attitude should I have? What approach should I take? And giving thanks is usually a good part of the answer. Absolutely, I, you know, it's to me, <clears throat> to me the the um, people talk all the time about well, God told me to do this, and God said, and so I did. You know, I did this, that, and the other. I have this imagination, and so I'm very. I have to worry about that. You know, I mean, I I write plays for a living. Consequently, I have. I make up stuff all the time, you know. I can make up stuff that God that God said, and uh, but when you are thankful, uh, when you just start, it's as simple as just when we were children, we were told count your blessings. Well, when you start doing that and you start thanking God, for one thing, I don't think you do that in your in the flesh. I mean, already you are mm-hmm. you are you know you're responding to this nudge from the Spirit within, saying, "Well, look what you got," mm-hmm. and it just. You, you can't help but step closer to God in that way. So you're saying that it, the spirit of God lives in us and he's fostering this attitude of thankfulness. And so if you're looking for the counsel of the Lord and you've wondered, where is God in this? What is God saying to me? Um, you know, I've got all this uh, turmoil in my life. Where is God? Mm-hmm. And part of the answer seems to be then that you're saying the spirit of God is working thankfulness within us. And uh, that's just one thought away. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so the number to call, 877-956-9566. Maybe you've got a reason you're thankful that you want to share with us today. Why are you thankful? Or do you have a question about being thankful? Or maybe you have a question about a scripture passage, something that you're dealing with. Uh, we would love to hear from you, 877-956-9566. Let's go out to Audrey in Hutto, Texas. Hi, Audrey. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I was wondering if you would repeat that definition of religion that you gave at the beginning. I have to write that down because it was just perfect. <laughs> Sure. Well, Audrey, yeah, the, one of the ways that, uh, you know, there's several theories about where we got the word religion from. Mm-hmm. And one theory is from the Latin, uh, the Latin word ligare, L-I-G-A-R-E. Now, Latin in Latin, the L-I-G-A-R-E word ligare 
uh, means to bind, to bind together. And it's where mm-hmm. we get our word ligament from. And so what binds all of your bones and limbs together are ligaments. And so uh, the word ligament came from ligare. And so then you've got uh, the first part of the word, a re, R-E. And R-E, of course, means a return to. And so that's why we put the the this the syllable re in front of a lot of english words if i mm-hmm. write something and then i rewrite it well i rewrite it that means i returned to write it again and so religion means to return to bind something again so religion is a return to bondage and that, so it's <clears throat> awesome that is exactly what it is mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. You think about uh, the Old Testament uh, roller coaster that people went through under the mm-hmm. law, trying to get God to like them and then retrying and then retrying and yes. retrying over and over and over, trying to get God to like them. And then they would sacrifice at the Day of Atonement. And then guess what? They would re sacrifice and then re sacrifice every year, re sacrificing. Uh, new animals, um, in order to get more forgiven and get more cleansed and get closer to God and all of that business. And we have one sacrifice, Jesus, and he said it's finished. So that's why we are not re-sacrificing, and that's why we are not re-turning to bondage over and over again. That's exactly what our pastor was talking about today. Uh, I know my my three children uh, were raised in church, and they loved it. They loved all the youth events. They just never had a problem. Uh, and now that they're adults, they're not there. They don't go to church, and I worry about that. So I've been really praying that that God uh, will work miracles in their lives. Hmm. Well, Audrey, uh, yeah, that is certainly a uh, spot on prayer for your children. I would say. You know, as you as you pray, you want to um, most of all just pray that the meaning of what Jesus did would be revealed to them. The meaning of the cross and the meaning of the resurrection, even if they never set foot in a church building again, uh, that the meaning of the cross and the meaning of the resurrection would become clear to them. Um, it's okay. personal. It's personal belief in Jesus that changes people. Uh, church attendance is wonderful, and community is great, and fellowship is awesome. But ultimately, it's about this belief in the cross and the resurrection. And uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a book uh, called God Without Religion. And that, okay. might be, that might be a good gift for them. After you've enjoyed it, pass it along to one of them. It's called God Without Religion, Can It Really Be This Simple?, and I think that it might grab their attention, the idea that they could have God without bondage, God without legalism, God yes. without, without a bunch mm-hmm. of religious baloney added on top. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Our pastor said that when, people, you, when you're around people like that, stay away from them, because they will just drag you back right into the bondage with them. Um, oh, I, I've really enjoyed your program today. Thank you well, listen, for taking hold on, my call. Hold on, if you would, and we're going to send you get your information so we can send you the book that uh, Andrew was talking about. And uh, you, we were talking about thought, thankfulness. She has a reason to be thankful. She has a pastor who knows the truth. Uh, that's wonderful. Not always mm-hmm. the case, mm-hmm. uh, sadly, uh, these days. So uh, that's great. And also, might suggest to um, to Audrey uh, that. Uh, that there's a website where she can go, which is uh, which is churchwithoutreligion.com, dot uh, com, the website for the church that Andrew Farley, uh, where he's the pastor in uh, in West Texas, and uh, that that uh, website has a just a wealth of free uh, resources there. Yeah, you're right, and uh, the issue too is that uh, you know people can revisit and 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 check those out, and it's because we need to be fueling up with the truth, yeah. uh, and, and you know. We all have that issue. I forget. I need to be reminded. And uh, so churchwithoutreligion.com is a great website if you want to check that out. We've also got a Church Without Religion app for your iPhone or Android. Well, let's uh, go right out to Randy in Texas. Uh, hi, Randy. You're on the air. Hey, I've got a question. It's kind of off topic. But 
if when Jesus was walking on the earth and he told you know people that if you see me, you see the Father. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get that God and Jesus are the same. But we also he said he had to go away and then he would return again. Mm-hmm. They wanted to know when that was going to take place. And he told them that only the Father knew that. How can they be the same and yet Jesus don't know when he's going to come back and get it? Mm, that's great. What a great question, Randy. Well, you know, uh, Jesus uh, chose limits. Uh, he chose to limit himself. Uh, of course, Jesus, uh, Colossians says that Jesus created the world. So Jesus is fully God. Um, but there was a moment in time when Jesus became fully man. And when he became fully man, he limited himself. Uh, that's why he's, you know, sweating bullets, so to speak, there in the garden. And he's saying, uh, Father, if there's any other way, please take this from me. Uh, so he doesn't know. Is there another way? Uh, is there a way out of this? Could the, you know, maybe is there a compromise? Do I really have to die on the cross? You know, uh, so he has chosen to limit himself. Uh, first of all, he limited himself physically as a baby. I mean, there he is in, you know, diapers and being held. And, and if nobody held him, he couldn't walk. Uh, yeah. You know, if nobody held him, he couldn't get anywhere. Uh, he had to learn to crawl, and then he had to learn to toddle around and, and learn to walk. And uh, so, you know, I think you have to come to the place where you say, I believe that Jesus Christ became fully man, and that meant that he took on limitations. Uh, he took on limitations in his physical shell. Uh, he took on limitations with his physical brain. Uh, and he had to walk by faith, not by sight. He didn't see God. Uh, he didn't see heaven. Uh, and so, uh, you know, he he chose these limits. And so for that reason, um, he didn't know the future all the time. He didn't know every aspect of the future. He could prophesy about his return, but he didn't tell when it was. Um, I think okay. it, in those 33 years, he uh, chose to be limited. I kind of thought that. I just wanted another opinion. It makes sense. But I appreciate that. Good, good question, Randy. Uh, hang on, we're going to give you this copy of Operation Screw Tape. You'll like the book, and just hold on, and we'll get your information. Eight seven seven nine five six nine five six six is the number. Love to have you call. It doesn't have to be on topic. Randy was apologizing. We wasn't, we're, there's no topic. We can uh, we can talk about anything you'd like to talk about today. <laughs> Love to have you give us a ring. We're just uh, uh, today. We're just visiting in this uh, in, the, in the aftermath of our thanks. Aftermath is not really the right word <laughs> for, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> but uh, but and for some people though, maybe it feels kind of like that. Right. You know, that's just that's sort of the deal. Some sometimes as as we grow, you know, I, it's interesting to me. I I, I am the youngest member of. Uh, of my siblings and then uh and my wife was was uh, next to the eldest consequently we have two different dynamics in our family all of mine were older and and grown by the time i came along and they had uh, changed already into what they were going to become her family all changed together they grew up and 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 as you marry and you you know things change and your priorities change and you grow naturally a little farther apart and then when you gather at thanksgiving and so forth trying to get back on the same page sometimes is hard and uh, it's just a natural thing it's not hmm. evil but it is difficult and when you have come to some kind of a of a uh, understanding that uh, has changed your life and you want to share that um wow good luck with that that's tough you know well, Jesus said that the gospel would divide uh, some families. It would divide a mother from daughter and father from son and brother from sister. I mean, it's not that uh, you or I or anyone wants to be offensive to other people, but our belief in Jesus is a big deal. Um, it, you know, the Bible says that we are set apart by faith. We are made holy by faith. And so you are set apart because of what you believe. What you believe sets you apart from the guy next door. And so uh, whether you like it or not, your beliefs have set you apart. Now, we can go two ways with that. We can dr- try to drive a knife into somebody's side and say, look what I believe, and I'm smarter than you, and I'm better than you. Or we can realize that um, you know, Christ wants to 
embrace our our family life and he wants our spirituality to be tied into our physicality what i mean by that is it's certainly wonderful to love people uh, who are who have family ties and and those are strong ties and God can use those relationships and use those ties, but never forget that flesh passes away and that we have a spiritual heritage, a spiritual lineage, a spiritual family that can't be taken from us. And so you know the most beautiful thing, of course, is when your physical family is also your spiritual family, yeah. but not everybody has that. Mm. Well, uh, let's go ahead out to Don in Maryland, talking with Don about an attitude of gratitude. Don? Yes, uh, I just want to make some comments and see what... I'm new to the program, first of all. I just had a... I got a new car about uh, six months ago, and I have access now to satellite radio, and I'm going through different channels, and I really enjoyed what I've heard so far. And uh, I would like to comment. We had uh, two series of uh, messages uh, on uh, gratitude, the attitude of gratitude. Mm-hmm. And I was really moved by the second one. Let me describe to you how, how it occurred and what it's about. Now, I don't remember the exact verses, but I'll just try to summarize what I did here. Uh, gratitude is something uh, related to thankfulness. Uh, it's an attitude that you have that re- reflects thankfulness. And uh, when he, uh, the pastor went to the messages, uh, rather to the epistles of Paul, there are sections in there that really speak to that. And Paul, when he was in prison, for example, uh, was in very, very dire circumstances, Mm -hmm. and he was in chains, and he was in a cold area, and he probably was very uncomfortable and hurting, yet Paul was able to sing hymns. Mm -hmm. And Paul had been in many, many circumstances where he had come close to being killed or drowned or whatever, and in everything, there was a verse that he talked to, the pastor talked to, about contented in all things. Mm -hmm. Now, contentment is an attitude of gratitude, and uh, you can be contented and thankful to God, not for what circumstances you're in, but mm-hmm. for Him alone. So what you do is you focus on Him when you're in those circumstances, and you thank Him. And those other things either fade away or get down in your low, low in your priority scheme. Uh, mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I got at. But I thought it was very, very, very illuminating. You know, very really moved me a lot. Well, Don, so, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. I agree with everything you said there. Uh, We'd love to. We'd love to send you this gift, uh, Operation Screw Tape, uh, with our compliments. And uh, you know, uh, Chip, he, he was talking. Don was talking there about uh, what Paul said. Paul said, "I learned the secret of contentment uh, in every circumstance, whether in in need or whether having riches. You know, whether hungry or uh, being fed." Um, it's not that you deny your circumstances. I mean, Paul is saying, look, I'm hungry. (laughs) Paul is saying, you know, look, I've got no money. Uh, So he knows that he has no money. He knows that he has no food in certain situations. But it's not a denial of circumstances. It's just that uh, I've got something deeper. Um, I do. I have something deeper that cannot be taken away from me, Uh, even if my very physical life is snatched from me. Uh, this can't be taken. And when you've got something deep down that no one else can take from you, um, it really can change your perspective on everything that's earthy. Mm-hmm. You know, it, what, what occurs to me is it's easier for me to accept that I have contentment. You know, you, we talk about, well, you have joy, and that's, that is outside, you know, the circumstances as well. But joy, we, we equate to happiness more, and we just just in a way, Mm -hmm. but contentment, uh, yeah, you know, that's something you have. You can have it in the middle of trauma in your life. You can still have that contentment, and that's a wonderful, wonderful point. Yeah, Uh, yeah, you know, the idea of happiness. uh, You know, a lot of people's idea of happiness is, look what's happening to me. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, what's happening? Well, if something good is happening, then I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And if something bad is happening, then I'm not happy. And so my happiness becomes about my happenings. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's not what what the gospel is. The gospel is you are going to have the world hate you. That's what Jesus said. Uh, In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus said. So you can expect the happenings to be really tough. Yeah, absolutely. And yet there's something deeper, this this happiness. So it's great that, uh, that Don was listening on Sirius XM there. Uh, also, Don, you can be listening on WAVA FM there out of Washington, D.C. Uh, we are on all every weekend, uh, same time, same program. And uh, uh, you are so grateful to be able to 
uh, be broadcasting there in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, even over into Pennsylvania, quite a, lo- a large station, and it's our sort of flagship station, and we're, uh, we're grateful for for that, as well as our, our broadcast on Sirius XM, which goes across the country and into Canada. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that uh, the uh, the congregation of uh, Church Without Religion has, has been doing, and, and the reason that we do this is because Every Sunday we we are privileged and blessed to be able to hear this message, and we truly believe with our heart that uh, that it was what we were to do uh, to try to make this available to the entire country because we want to share the teaching that uh, uh, Andrew has. It's uh, we we do believe it is a uniquely clear message that uh, God has, has gifted him to to be able to present, and so. That's what we committed to do, but let me tell you that it is a, a big financial burden to be able to do it. It's, uh, it is a, a huge, huge uh, burden for a relatively small church, and so if, if you have found this message helpful to you, if you feel uh, thankful, you know, we, we've talk, we're talking about that a little bit, if uh, this is a way for you to express uh, your thanks in, uh, in terms of helping us with the broadcast, you can go to... Uh, churchwithoutreligion.com and uh, the, the one word one big long word churchwithoutreligion.com and you can uh, it's easy there to give uh, and you can give one time gift you can set it up so that you can give routinely we would love to have you join us in this uh, in this mission to present the grace of Jesus Christ to the entire country and and uh, it's just been the most gratifying thing to uh, to hear people uh, hearing this message for the first mm-hmm. time, going to the website perhaps, and getting some other uh, resources, buying the books that Drew has written, and uh, and growing yeah. in grace. Well, and I want to take this chance to also say uh, thank you to those who have given. Uh, we've had so many givers from around the country. You've kept us afloat and kept us on the air, and at this time of year we want to say thank you. And and uh, the reality is is that we're about to hit the end of the year and look back and and see if we come out okay. And, uh, you know, we're right on target, but we need uh, consistent giving throughout the end of the year. And so if this is on your heart to support us, we would love to have you do that. Again, it's churchwithoutreligion.com, churchwithoutreligion.com. Well, let's go out to Virginia, listening on WAVA in the East Coast. Uh, Vincent, you're on the air. Yes, hello. Thank you. Um, First off, I'd like to say I'm thankful for this show program um first time i've ever heard it i'm uh traveling uh from pennsylvania to virginia um active duty military so i was uh, able to see my family um so i'm very thankful for that um also for this heavy traffic so i can uh focus a little more on what you're saying (laughs) Um, also uh my question for you was my my understanding going back to the to your um, term religion, mm-hmm. um, my understanding, if I remember correctly, Paul called himself a prisoner of, of God, um, which is uh, a type of bondage that is a, a positive bondage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I always understood religion, the behavior in itself, to be a form or, or way of, of, of disciplining um, oneself so that you can be... Uh, obedient to God. And so Mm -hmm. I've I've always understood religion to be a positive thing as, you know, being in a military background, discipline is very important so that we can follow the rules that we, that that are, you know, bestowed upon us. Right. And so to to be, uh, uh, I understand where you're going with with your term, but Mm -hmm. from what I understand is to be in a a church without religion would be Mm -hmm. sort of like, what what, in your opinion or, or your, your mm-hmm. explanation, would be the replacement for religion prior to um, the, you know, Jesus coming and, and, and dying on the cross? And so we don't need, like you said, to, to live in that way like they did before. What's mm-hmm. the replacement? What's, how, do we, how do we maintain that uh, yeah. discipline, especially with the newer, newer people coming in as yeah. uh, new, new to the faith? Yeah, well, uh, Vincent, uh, in in one word, I would say the Spirit, uh, the Spirit of God. Uh, So, you know, what is it that replaces a bunch of laws written on stone 
And the answer is the Spirit of God. Uh, so you, you talk about discipline, and it, discipline is important. But then I look at the fruit of the Spirit, uh-huh. and the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So what I need is the Spirit. See, the, the self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of self-discipline. So the way that you discipline your body in the military is different from the way that we are spiritually disciplined. Um, We are spiritually disciplined as we yield to the Spirit of God and He produces self-control within us. Uh, So you're right. I want to go back and affirm many of the things that you said about Paul said he was a prisoner of Christ. and, And what he meant was he's an apostle and he's out on the road and he's serving Christ and he's connected to Christ. Uh, you know, he's serving God in his spirit and he's connected to Christ. And 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 then you say, well, what about this? You know, what about church without religion? Can you have church without religion? Well, I think it it, it really depends on how you're defining the term. And that's why we were re- very careful to say, hey, we mean what we mean here is church without bondage, uh, church without legalism, church without uh, a rule driven uh, thing. It's not about rules. It's about a relationship. And so Colossians chapter 2 says, beware, watch out for self-made religion. Uh, Watch out for a bunch of rules like do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Those rules have the appearance of wisdom, uh, but they lack any value. And so they really don't restrain uh, anything sinful. So... um, you know, it's uh, it's interesting that the world has rules and the military has rules and the military has laws and you're told to discipline your body. And that's a certain approach to self-improvement, if you will. But then in the spiritual world, uh, we really can't self-improve. It's got to be the spirit of God and his work. And so, um, you know, the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And I can just let the spirit do that instead of uh, a bunch of rules on the outside. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, thanks for thank you for your call, there, Vincent. Brother. Vincent, hold on, and we're going to get your information and send you a copy of Operation Screw Tape, the opera, the uh, the art of spiritual warfare. And brother, thank you for uh, your service. We appreciate your willingness to uh, to be there and uh, and to be protecting our freedoms and the ability to worship god as we as we choose in this country i think that is uh it's a huge sacrifice glad to have uh, men who have a heart for god in in the the armed services yeah your son-in-law in fact is out mm-hmm. there near virginia on the east coast in maryland thomas uh, and he uh, he has served in the military for many years so yep, served for about eight years and uh and uh, we're proud of him and uh, and glad that uh, they can also listen on WAVA as well. So that's a, that's a, a great thing. Eight seven seven nine five six nine five six six is our number. Here you can speak with Doctor Andrew Farley live, and we'd love to have you do that. Just give us a call, and if there's a question that you have, and and any time, just like with Vincent, you know something you hear, and you're going, wait a minute, now I need to. I need a little clarification. Uh, that's that's the greatest thing because yeah, pick up the phone and give us a call, and uh, we'll go in into that. Uh, it is hard, you know, the first time you hear something like this. It's like, no, wait a minute, religion. I need that. Well, I, you know, one of the things you said, and I it really it really uh, spoke to me that that uh, this is not a behavior improvement uh, course. I, I I'd never heard that before, and I had to I had to kind of scratch my head because I thought. Well, then what's it, what are we doing here? (laughs) (laughs) And so, but as, as it soaks in, absolutely. Yeah. 80% of Christians surveyed in that recent Barna survey, they concluded that Christianity was about following the rules in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we think it's about following rules and self-improvement, but it's really, uh, it's really about, you know, the source is Jesus and the goal is getting to know Jesus. And along the way it's Jesus and so we say, you know, we ask questions like Vincent did, like, hey, if, if, it, if it's not religion and it's not laws, then 
what is going to be the substitute for that? And we're racking our brain for what is the substitute for laws. And the answer is the spirit of God. And he deposits his spirit in you so that he can live his life through you. And he is enough. And uh, it, it, it's strange because it's not self-improvement, but it is being a house. You're a house and dwelt by the Lord. And the Lord is doing the Lord's work in you. And um, he, he's all we need. Well, and, and the thing is, uh, the reason that that question exists is not because somebody came up with it by themselves. They've been taught that over years and years and decades and, and millennia of, of, of rule, uh, you know, rule following uh, in the name of God. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's go out to uh, Buffalo, New York, and talk with Lori. Hi, Lori. Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask a question around the scriptures, the verses of Ephesians 5, 30, mm. and Colossians 3, 3. Um, Ephesians, it's a member of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And in Colossians uh, 3, 3, uh, and your life is hidden with Christ. Now, I'm thinking... The blood is not, our blood is not mentioned. It's just flesh and bone. And I'm thinking that because in on this earth, mm-hmm. blood is associated with life. And when we have resurrected bodies in Christ, he is our life. We are covered by his spilt blood. Mm-hmm. And he is our very life, and therefore we will need the blood. Am I on the right track, or is there something totally different going on? Well, yeah, I I think really there is something a little bit different going on here. We're in Ephesians 5, and we're looking at verse 30. And verse 30 says, We are members of his body. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. So uh, the point here is that we are one with Christ, just like a husband and a wife become one physically, we are now one with Jesus Christ. And so you are his body on planet Earth. Like he doesn't have a physical body. He did for 33 Mm -hmm. years, but he gave up that physical body and uh, got beamed up to heaven again. Uh, You know, at the uh, at the end of the story there, he's crucified, buried, raised and then ascends into heaven And so he gave up his physical body at that point um, and has a spiritual body uh, that was walking through walls and that sort of thing and then uh, went to be with God. So uh, who is his physical body? Well, the answer is us. We are his physical body on planet Earth. We are his presence. We are uh, he lives in us and we live in him. So this is about our oneness with Christ and you know, then you go over to Colossians 3, 3, and we've got a similar situation, um, except I think it's even more beautiful, if that's possible. It says, you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So this means, again, that you're one with Jesus. You're married to Christ. Uh, Christ is your life. Um, he's not just a priority in Lori's life. He's not, you know, Christ is not Lori's priority. Christ is Lori's life. And so if, if Christ is Lori's life, then that means wherever Lori goes, whether it is at, to work or hanging out at home or driving down the street in the car, uh, Christ is your life. And so both of these passages, Lori, are talking about your union with Christ, uh, the fact that you are one with him. And, um, yeah, this is a very neglected belief. Um, in fact, there's a, a movement right now uh, that I found out about a couple days ago. There's a movement right now that has been around for a few hundred years, and this movement is having a conference. And their conference theme this year is your union with Christ. And uh, their uh, their plug line is, uh, well, this is a doctrine you have never heard of, most likely. Yeah. So it, ma- it makes you wonder, what have they been teaching for hundreds of years? If this is the new doctrine that you're united with Christ, then what in the world have we been talking yeah. about prior to this conference? 
So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, these are important verses, but they're not about a resurrection body. They're not about a future in heaven. They're not about you dying and getting a new body. They're actually about your union with Christ. Now, with that said, when we do go to heaven, we'll, the thought is, well, somebody at church brought this up. That's why I, I happen to read it mm-hmm. and see it. And But in heaven, we are not going to have blood in our body, though, are we? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, of course, I don't know the intricacies of that new spiritual body, but Jesus had nothing physical about him when he went through walls and when he right. floated up to heaven. So... Um, I anticipate that whatever body Jesus had there is the same sort of body that we will have. Jesus walked alongside Mary, and uh, Mary didn't recognize him, uh, but then Mary recognized him, and they had a conversation. Uh, You know, Jesus said, uh, you know, he walked through the walls, and he appeared to the disciples, and they didn't think he was an alien. They recognized him as some sort of human. Uh, and they wanted to touch the wounds in his hands, which interestingly were still there. And yet he had a new resurrection body. So, um, you know, I think we basically are going to get a new body like Jesus had um, in that upper room. Um, but, the, you know, even before then, I guess the main point is before then, before that happens, even right now, wow, you and me, we are one with Jesus Christ. And that closeness is now. Okay, great. All right, great. Thank you so much. Well, okay. Lori, hang on, and we'll get you the copy of Operation Screw Tape uh, in the mail to you. You'll enjoy that. We're glad, glad you called today. Our number is 877-956-9566. would encourage everybody listening to uh, go to our website, which is churchwithoutreligion.com. And uh, there's several things there that uh, you can do. Um, one of them is you can actually join us on Sunday mornings uh, uh, at 1030 Central for our church service. And you can hear uh, Andrew Farley uh, delivering a message every Sunday. And it's just, uh, it's it's great. We have folks uh, all over the country starting a sort of home churches, uh, ecclesias of, of their own in their churches uh, and, and uh, in their homes and then joining us. And so it's a great thing. And uh, if you haven't found a, a church uh, that teaches truth, well, what a great uh, opportunity to do that. Where two or more are gathered, there he is with us. That's the beauty of uh, home church, home Bible study, a big church, small church. It doesn't matter. Uh, we are the church. <laughs> we have some people I know that uh, actually uh, can go to the archive broadcasts, and, and they'll they'll have church again on Wednesday with uh, uh, with your teaching, and and you know it's 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 perfect. You don't have to give up your home church, but you can uh, you can certainly avail yourself of the opportunity to get this teaching mm-hmm. uh, all, all all the time. Well, let's go out to Washington D.C. and talk with Warren. Hi, Warren. Yes. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, I have a question about the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. and I have an understanding that it's the uh, birth, death, burial and the blood of the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Because there's also the gospel of the kingdom, too. Yes, you're right. It is uh, about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, the kingdom, there's lots of things that Jesus has to say about the kingdom. Um, And uh, many of those things relate to life in heaven, but many of those also just sort of... uh, relate to parables and stories that Jesus told about God as a king and there being servants under him. But I would say, as far as nailing the content of the gospel, you nailed it. Uh, The death, what is the death? It brings us forgiveness. Uh, What is the resurrection? It brings us new life. Uh, we, We turn from unbelief and we choose to believe in the gospel message and we are born again and totally forgiven. Oh, that's good. That's good. Would, would, would the kingdom of uh, the gospel of the kingdom relate to the period of time uh, when the Jewish population at that time uh, did not believe in grace was not at that particular time that they believed in a uh, kingdom on earth? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Jesus is talking about a kingdom and his father is the king. And so he, you know, quite frankly, sometimes he, he paints a very bloody picture of this uh, kingdom servant relationship. There are some times when he talks about the servants being punished, being beaten, 
um, and because they didn't do enough, they didn't work hard enough, they didn't please God. And uh, so sometimes I think Jesus is burying people under a law mentality. So in that sense, you know, uh, you've got a Jewish audience and um, God is painting a picture of, hey, if you want to perform for the king, you'd better get busy. Um, and uh, and then the rich man goes away sad, and the Pharisees, they go away mad, and everybody feels like, well, we can't do this. What kind of kingdom is this where I can't excel and get promoted in the kingdom? Uh, and so, you know, the, the word kingdom is used so many times. Uh, even in the New Testament epistles, it says he transferred us from a kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his light. And so... I don't think you want to just say kingdom always means this. Uh, that would be a mistake. The word kingdom is all over the Bible. It can mean many things in different places. Uh, but I have zero doubt, zero doubt that Jesus uh, many times was purposely burying people under pride, under a, a gospel of self-improvement, if you want to call it that, and showing them, hey, you want to self-improve? Well, the standard is be perfect, just like your heavenly Father is perfect. Sell everything, uh, cut off your hand, cut off, pluck out your eye, uh, you know, uh, be for, forgiving to other people, and then God will forgive you. Um, and so these kingdom snapshots uh, aren't very encouraging. And then, of course, then he turns right around and talks about a vineyard and, a, and a, an employer who employs vineyard workers, and he speaks of a gracious God who um, forgives and pays everybody the same. Uh, so you can't just lump all uses of the word kingdom into one bin. I think it's used many ways. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on if you would, just a moment, and we'll get your information, get this copy of Operation Screw Tape to you. You'll enjoy the book, I'm sure. And thank you so much for listening today. 877-956-9566 is the number to speak with Dr. Andrew Farley live today. Good calls today. Oh, yeah. You know, this. This it's interesting. I mean, we want to make our theology clean uh, with every parable and every uh, piece of verbiage used by Jesus but the Bible tells us that Jesus is a stumbling stone. I mean, that uh, he's a rock of offense, that, uh, you know, the disciples didn't have a clue what he was saying at the time and th that he had to bring it to their remembrance later and help them understand it better through the counselor, the comforter. So it's no surprise that we would have to wade through the words of Jesus and go, huh, what? What do you mean there, Lord? And uh, we may hit heaven confused still about this or that thing uh, concerning what Jesus said. Um, the, the man is God, and the God became man. And this God-man uh, said some things to purposely baffle people at times. Sure, and, and, and it gets a whole lot clearer uh, when you do that dividing line at the resurrection. That, uh, you know, that's the thing that, uh, and, and, and that I heard you teach, and it, and it is. It's so, it's so fundamental. If you don't have that, you know, I've, I've had conversations with people that talk about, uh, for example, well, if you're not forgiven, if you don't, if you don't forgive others, you're not forgiven. And Jesus himself said that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus said to sell everything too. And, and, and Jesus said to chop off body parts too. And yet we don't look like an amputation ward, do we? Here we are with our arms and our legs and obviously those listening, our ears. <laughs> so we're not obeying the words of Jesus. Well, Jesus had an intent there. He had a purpose. He had an audience. And sometimes he wasn't preaching a beautiful message of you can do it. <laughs> he was preaching a message of the you can't do it. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Uh, and, you know, he's called some people snakes and uh uh, you know, he was just creating a standard for people that they could not possibly meet. And then, as you said, Chip, you know, through the resurrection, he says, here's righteousness for free. It's a gift. Here's forgiveness for free. It's a gift. Now, you can go forgive other people, but look, I already forgave you. Ephesians 4.32, I already forgave you, so pass it on to other people. Colossians 3.13, I already forgave you, so pass it on to other people. But you're not going to earn this forgiveness by being so swell. And uh, that's what Jesus was telling the Pharisees and the Jews around him. 
And we can't just put all of the words of Jesus in a nice bin and categorize that bin as stuff for us to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's also it, it's imp- important, I think, to think about who he was talking to. Like you say, he was talking to Jews. He was talking to Jews who had this big book, and, and if they did all that stuff, they were just fine. They weren't seeking. They weren't seeking to be better people they weren't seeking to be to find the heart of god they had a set of rules yeah and they still do he said it yeah he said it straight to their face he said you're searching the scriptures because you think that in that book over there you have life but that book talks about me Mm -hmm. and you won't come to me to have life so there was they were satisfied with book knowledge and what jesus was saying is it's not a book it's a person it's not about a book it's about a person you you read the book but only to get to know the author well, let's go out to Columbia, Maryland, and talk with Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi. Hi. How y'all doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I just wanted to thank you, first of all, um, for your radio show. I think this might have been the first time I've heard it, but um, I really like how clear you are about things and kind of um, common sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I have a couple people in my family who think that um, being a believer is the same thing as being religious. So I want to look over your website and maybe refer them to that because I can see how you're more clear on that. Mm. So that's the comment I wanted to make. And then a question is my mom is um, she's not a believer and she um, really wants to see world peace in on earth while she's still alive. Mm. And she's kind of made that a little bit of her life's work she she goes to a vigil and she goes to a quaker meeting and has been involved in women's groups and stuff like that and um i become a believer in the last couple of years and i I, for my understanding that's really not going to happen until jesus comes again yeah so mm -hmm. i'm wondering if that's right and then what you know what can i say to her because i don't want to like burst her bubble Mm -hmm. but um you know it just seems like she's kind of setting herself up for disappointment Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you know, Claire, you've hit on something important. Imagine if world peace were possible. Uh, that would mean, number one, that the world is a good place or that the world is getting better. Mm-hmm. And no- number two, it would mean that the world has the power within itself through education and through wise choices to uh, create a better environment resulting in permanent world peace. Right, and, right. And uh, basically, then there'd really be little to no need for the gospel or for Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and so because the answer would lie within ourselves. Right. And the answer would lie within education, that yep. we could educate ourselves out of this mess and improve ourselves out of this mess. And so, um, yeah, I would say that you are correct that uh, we shouldn't expect that, um, and uh, it's not it's not going to happen. Uh, we mm-hmm. know that Christ returns, and he doesn't return to a peaceful world that didn't need him. He returns mm-hmm. to a mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world is an absolute shambles when Jesus Christ returns, and so... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, things get worse, not better. Revelation talks about wars and rumors of wars, uh, talks mm-hmm. about all kinds of calamity and, uh, you know, disruptions, not hum- not not world peace. So mm-hmm. I, I think that, um, you know, as far as ministering to her, mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be a, a tough one uh, because, yeah. you know, your, your focus really could be on... Um, not saying, hey, mom, you're you're wrong about this world peace thing. Yeah. But but instead, um, just telling her, hey, you know what? I'm so excited about. I'm so excited about Jesus. I'm so mm-hmm. excited about his death and resurrection and what that means for me personally. Um, you know, in communicating mm-hmm. with family and relatives, um, no one, no one can take away your story. No right. one can take away your testimony. Uh, no one can take away what Claire says she believes. Mm-hmm. And so I just encourage you uh, not to go about trying to correct your mom's belief system, but yeah. instead keep the focus on you and what you believe and what you're celebrating and why you're thankful this holiday season. Mm-hmm. And just remember uh, that it's all about the love of Christ and extending his love to others. For more information on Andrew's books, please visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. 
Join us every week at this time as we invite you to celebrate the freedom of God's grace. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.